Sunday, the Westminster Concert Organ Series opens their 2019-2020 concert series with the young organ virtuoso Sebastian Heindel. This past June, Sebastian wowed audiences at the prestigious Longwood Garden International Organ Festival, winning first prize. He has performed throughout Europe North and North America, pleasing and engaging audiences wherever he goes with his extreme mastery of the organ. Winnipeg audiences have the opportunity this Sunday at 2.30 at Westminster United Church to see this truly gifted organist, Sebastian Heindel, perform works by Franck, Beethoven, Bach, and others. And joining me here in the Classic 107 studios is Sebastian Heindel. Welcome to our Classic 107 studios. Good afternoon. Yeah, it's nice to have you here. First, I want to welcome you to Winnipeg. When did you get here? I get in today. At 8 a.m., I took a flight from Montreal and arrived here around 10 or so. Nice, nice. Already had some time at the organ and figured things out. So you have had you have had an opportunity to, bit, play, yes. to play the organ at the church. That's, that's great. Um, I just want to talk a b- little bit about your early days. I know that aside from being an organist, you also um, sung as a chorister in the St. Thomas Boys Choir in Leipzig. When did you start playing the organ? And did you play organ and sing at the same time? I'm presuming you did. Like, how did that process w- start? It came up uh, approximately the same time, the singing in the choir and playing the organ. Of course, singing in the choir means performing three times a week in the church. And, of course, St. Thomas Church is the church of Johann Sebastian Bach right. in Leipzig. So uh, his music was omnipresent everywhere. And we were singing a cantata every week. And, of course, uh, before the so-called motet, when the cantata was sung, there was always a big organ prelude. And the right. Thomas organist Ulrich Böhmen was playing all the great organ works of Bach, and so I get to know them very quickly within a, within a year in the choir and heard them again and again over the years. And basically from that experience, the wish came also playing the organ. And so who did you study with in, in Leipzig? Did you study with, with the organist at the, at the cathedral? Or? Um, no, I started having lessons with, a, un, with the university organist in Leipzig, Daniel Bayerschmidt. But I assisted Thomas organist Ulrich Böhme. I was page turning him, uh, pulling the stops for him, and sometimes substituting him, accompanying. So I was kind of an organ scholar at that time. Oh, wow. I've always wondered this about organists. If you're a touring organist, how long does it take to adjust to the instrument that is available to you, depending upon the number of manuals or keyboards that the organ has, or the number of stops and where the stops are placed? How do you get used to playing an organ that you've never played on before? Every every organ is different, right? Right, right. That's the special thing. I think it's at the same time curse and blessing of the organist's life that every instrument is so individual and so unique. They haven't n- have never pr- been produced in series. Organs are highly individual, and of course, the bigger the organ, the longer it takes to get used to it. For example, the organ in the Longwood Gardens where that competition was was a huge organ with 220 ranks and uh, you had to get a lot of time to to get along with it. But at the end, the possibilities are nearly endless. You can do every sound, you can produce orchestral sounds. I, I always say that the organ is the first kind of synthesizer ever yeah, in, right. invented. So um, you have endless possibilities and it's... A, ble- a blessing to use them and to have some time during the traveling to get to know all these instruments. And does it take long? Like how long for an average organ does it like, how long, how many hours do you have to be at the organ in order to get used to how it plays? Uh, you have to at least arrive the day before yeah, the right. performance. So for an organist, it is very uncommon arriving on the day of the performance. Usually you fly in uh, the day before and then spend some hours in the evening uh, also enjoying the atmosphere at the church be- because churches at, at night are absolute, absolutely special places. Yeah, it's yeah. always really enjoyable um, having these quiet place, these big space and the acoustics for yourself and preparing for a concert. I think it's all also kind of a special spiritual experience. Oh, wow. Nice. So the program is called The Heroic Organ, Reformation, Metamorphosis, and Revolution. Can you talk about how the program for this Sunday's concert came together? Like, how did you put that series of pieces together? Do you want to talk about the program? 
Um, in generally, this is a program which follows me on this tour and several concerts because all these concerts are built around Reformation Day on October 30, 31st. So um, I took a choice of pieces which are related to the Reformation um, and try to figure out also other aspects. For example, Beethoven's Egmont Overture, um, he wrote that, that as an uh, overture to a drama by Goethe, Goethe yeah. and um, the basic uh, setting of this drama is in the 16th century during the Re Reformation and the uh, fight of the Catholics against the Protestants and these figure at Egmont is a person standing in between them. It's it's in the Netherlands and so uh, I just try to find some um, pieces which could relate to this topi topic as well as Mendelssohn's Paulus Overture. I also play it in a transcription which has these famous choral Sleepers Awake mm. in it which is a famous choral of the Reformation. Right. So I build up a program around this topic and took a choice of uh, works originally written by the o for the organ, for example, Bach's Toccata Adagio and Fugue in C Major, and on the other hand, um, transcriptions of orchestral right. um, repertoire. Huh. I'm, I'm also very interested in this piece by Terry Eskesh. Uh, you were playing two of the three poems for organ by him. How did you get to know Terry Eskesh and his compositions for the organ? He's an organist himself, right? I do you think, want to talk about him? Yes, he, he seems to be one of the um, most successful uh, composers of the contemporary organ music. He, he lives in Paris and uh, his music is very interesting because he combines a very striking rhythmic language with uh, very rich harmonies, but at the same time his music always stays... Um, Captable for everybody. I think it's not a, a very uh, a music only for musicians, which is very academic. I think it's un it's captable for for everybody because of its rhythm, and in this uh, particular pieces, it it is really interesting because these are also transcriptions. Originally, they have been scored for choir and organ, yeah. and then for some reason he transcribed the choir pieces back to the organ solo. So it's a transcription by himself originally. And it's really interesting because you can feel the lyrics of this choir pieces. The third one is a Kyrie eleison, Chris eleison, and you really can feel the language and the consonants and the speaking language in this kind of organ music. And that fascinated me of this pieces. Oh, wow. Uh, the other piece uh, that I want to talk about is that Beethoven uh, Egmont Overture arrangement. It's one of the things about the organ that you have an advantage of. And we've talked about this earlier. It's like you have an orchestra at your fingertips, you know, with all the, with all the stops and whatnot. Does this ever create challenges when you're playing an orchestral transcription? Like I was watching your video on YouTube of you performing the Night on Bob Mountain by Mussorgsky, and I'm always amazed that organists, they're not always, they're not only playing the manuals, the keyboard of the organ, but they're having to pull out stops in the middle. Of, does that ever get like, does it may ever, do you ever feel like you're spinning too many plates at the same time? It's definitely a multitasking, but I always try to uh, arrange the transcriptions like that, that the stops are integrated very musically into the performance, that they are not like a technical thing which distracts you from the music. I just try to uh, include them and incorporate them like a conductor has to incorporate all the cues he gives right. for the different instruments group. So uh, a conductor, of course, not always ca ca can focus on his own enjoying of the music. He has to organize right. um, these complex happenings when, during an orchestral piece. And the same I try to do when I uh, play transcriptions on the organ. I, try to deal the organ stops as players who play their instrument and they have to get their cue at some point right. to find in. Um, and so uh, I, I always really enjoy that kind of organ playing because it makes it rich uh, for the audience and for the player. It makes it, of course, difficult. It is a challenge mm -hmm. and it is 
just big fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, quickly, uh, I should have asked this before. What is an organ stop for those p- people who are unfamiliar with the organ? Uh, a stop in the organ is basically uh, a row of pipes. So uh, you have one pipe for each key you have on the manual, and then you have different rows of these pipes, and all of them are slightly different. They look different um, and uh, are from different material, different shape, and so they produce different kind of colors. And some of those stops can sound remarkably like the instrument that, uh, that, that, yes. they're, that they're meant for. I'm, I'm a clarinet player, and I know listening to, I mean, some of the acoustic uh, possibilities are the same, you know, this whole idea of the conical bore. But when you pull out a clarinet stop on the organ, it's remarkable how much it actually sounds like the instrument. Definitely, yeah. I think that's a, speci- a special thing about the uh, American um, organ building. They These stops are highly orchestral. Uh, today at my time at the Westminster United Church, I already figured out beautiful things. Uh, this organ has a wond- wonderful English horn, also a wonderful clarinet, an orchestral oboe, a cello. These are all uh, very, uh, very characteristic characteristic stops and they are fitting very well and all created with pipes it's it's incredible that's the amazing thing yeah it's just all these are pipes but some of them when you go inside the organ they would look so weird that you n- could barely recognize them at pipes because they have interesting shapes yeah yeah sebastian i want to thank you so much for stopping by our classic 107 studios and talking to us today it's been a real treat thanks for stopping thank you by. thank you Join Sebastian Heindel this Sunday afternoon at 2.30 at Westminster United Church as he performs on the Cassavant organ at Westminster United. This is going to be an amazing concert. Sebastian is truly a master of the organ, and this will be a concert not to be missed this Sunday. For more information on Sunday's concert, go to westminsterchurch.organ backslash WCOS. Thanks again for stopping by our Classic 107 studios. Goodbye.